guys do anything on Mother's Day? Good evening, everyone. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I need a motion to approve the agenda for this evening, May 8th, 2023. Duncan, Eric, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. And well, first we're going to start with a um, athlete. I'm going to turn it over to James Hutchins, the science teacher who is going to share a lot of fabulous news on what our students have succeeded and achieved. Can I move this over to yeah. the stand? Just turn it on to the recording. Stand. <laughs> Just turn it on to the recording. How's that? Okay. So yes, my name is Jim Hutchins. I have the pleasure of being the seventh grade science teacher. Um, I'm here tonight so that we can recognize the winners from the middle school annual STEM Expo Science Fair, which was held on the evenings of Tuesday, April 25th and Wednesday, April 26th. 45 projects from the seventh grade were submitted. They were either done by individual students or students working with a partner. For their projects, students had to design a science experiment, conduct the experiment, and write up the results. This is a project they've been working on since October, so I'm sure they're glad to be done. Um, the trifolds were judged by eight volunteer judges, and um, projects were awarded first through third place, plus honorable mentions. In addition, Ms. Snyder, who is the a uh, high school science club advisor brought the high school science club down to look at them, and they also um, picked three projects to award for excellence. So let me go ahead and read off their names. I'm gonna read off their names whether they're here or not, just so everyone gets to hear them. So for honorable mentions, we have Drake Angel and Henry Ross. Henry, you wanna come up here? Right here. Um, also with an honorable mention is Aiden Fitzpatrick, who I didn't see arrive. Uh, Caden Hens, who is here for his um, experiment on cleaning pennies. <laughs> um, and Chase Hodge, who has he? I haven't seen him. He honorable mention for egg float. Um, also, we have here with us um, Cody Nolan, who got one of the High School Science Club Awards for his project on ripening dragon fruit. Okay. Then in third place, we have Clarence Corcoran and Haley Utano for Factors and Seasons. We had a tie for two projects for second place. Uh, one of the projects was Ben Johnston and Ryan Smeagol for cooling a soda. And the other second place was for Abigail Marlowe for tie-dye fabric. And then we had a two-way tie for first place for two projects. We had Maddie Kenna and Chloe Oud for cookie ingredients. And then also in first place for learning and creativity is Nessa Kelger and Kyle Powell. thank our um, eight volunteer judges. It's a lot of work. They're here for a couple of hours judging. Um, every project gets judged by two judges. So I want to thank Teresa Carlton, Todd Hilgendorf, Zoe Hutchins, 
Isabella Kazanjan, Steve Konis, Paul Kelly, Karen Manning, and Jill Snyder for their judging. Lastly, I want to thank all the seventh breathers, both here and not here, for their hard work on it and the family support for getting it done. Good job, guys. You can speak. Mr. Hutchins, I, I think it would. Uh, we need to make sure we thank you as well for putting out another outstanding event. I'm always amazed by what these kids can come up with and the, the work that they do and how hard they work to get to where they're at today. So thank you to the kids for representing very well and to uh, all those adults who help support it. Thanks again. And the winning triangles are set up for anyone who wants to take a look at them. All right, so before we move on, there are a couple of uh, additional accolades I just would like to uh, read out right now. Uh, we started something a little bit new this year. Uh, we thought it was appropriate being Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, having the opportunity for kids to kind of recognize some of the teachers that have made a difference uh, in their lives and how they make their education, uh, they want to thank for their education. So we've got over 100 cards that will be going into teacher mailbox from students uh, with just little notes on them for, for thanking them for the work that they do. So I just, I won't read them all, but I just want to read a couple. Uh, Mrs. Hollywood has always been one of the best caring and supportive teachers. I know she has always told me I could, I, I could when I didn't think I could. She always pushed me to be my best and she believed in me and I, I thank her for that. And that's where, why I'm at where I'm at today. Another one goes out to Mr. Thiela, never fails to start my day off bright with fun and positive attitude in class. Uh, he's been understanding and kind and always had his classroom open to me and many others when I needed help with an assignment or a person to talk to. He fills the classroom with fun and laughter, is kind and understanding in, in and outside the class and creates his classroom to be safe space or learning is fun. Thank you for everything. There's a, there's a few more on here. Uh, I won't read, read all of them, but I just, it was kind of a nice way to let our kids kind of uh, recognize our teachers for the work they've done and, and for Teacher uh, Appreciation Week. So thank you for all the kids for participating in that. Thank you for our teachers for being uh, wonderful role models for our kids. And just one and another one that wasn't on our agenda. Uh, I was uh, given a, a Got a nice little mailing from the New York State School Boards Association uh, informing me that we have a school board member who is going to be recognized uh, for through the recognition program and how this usually works is if they've gone in and participated in a number of different uh, professional development opportunities uh, through NISBA they will uh, accrue some points and I'm proud to, to say that uh, I think last year we uh, honored Duncan for some work that he did this year uh, our board member who has kind of gotten to that level is uh, our board president, Tracy Young, uh, for her participation in New York State School Boards Association leadership development opportunity, opportunities totaling 150 points. Uh, so they sent a nice little certificate for Tracy. So Tracy, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, she had no idea that was coming. Learning is continuous. Um, open forum. So move us on to open forum, and the 30-minute open forum is the time the board sets aside to hear in-person comments from the public. Comments may also be emailed in advance of the meeting prior to 4 p.m. on the date of the meeting, and state in the email if you would like your correspondence read out loud to Daphne Pearson, District Clerk, at PearsonD at GreenvilleCSD.org. This is an opportunity for residents to voice general concerns and compliments, especially about items on the agenda. However, this is not the time to register complaints about specific individuals or about items that should be addressed confidentially through the proper channels, typically with the principal or superintendent of schools. All comments shall be addressed to the district clerk 
and shall be limited to no more than five minutes per board policy 2180. Please note that members of the board may not be able to directly respond to citizens' concerns during the public open forum. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Do we have any emails? No, we do not. Okay. Then for discussion items, we have um, the first one are board goals and objectives and the orientation manual. Now it has my name next to it. However, I had promised not to steal the thunder of the board member who has diligently been working on it. So I'd like to turn it over to Angela to talk a little bit about the orientation manual. Um, I spoke a little bit about this. I think it was either the last meeting or the meeting before. It's been almost a year in the making. We have this excellent resource. Um, it is now live to the public. If you go to our website and you click on the Board of Education page, on the left-hand side, you'll see Orientation and Informational Guide. This is going to be a resource. We will have one or two new board members coming on. They can access this for any information, links, education, anything they need. It's also helpful for the public if they have a question of, you know, what is the chain of command? Um, what role does the board play in the issues that I'm having right now? Basically anything. Um, it's 37 pages, so I wasn't going to go through it with everyone, but uh, definitely take a look at it. Um, and I did not do this by myself. This was me, this was Jim, Tracy, Hunter, and Sierra, and actually all of our board members gave feedback on little tweaks along the way, so it was it was a team effort, and I'm very proud of it. Thank you, and in the vein of continuous learning, there are lots of links, so if someone has a question and they want additional information, then by looking at the document, they can take you through, um, and you can be busy for a while learning. So thank you very much. And Angel, where did you say on the website it's located? Um, if you go to the main website and click on the Board of Education link, you'll see it on the left-hand side below where you would find board docs. All right, um, moving on to 5.2, the draft school improvement and district goals um, for the 23-24 development calendar. Michael, turn it over to you. Okay, so the uh, school improvement, draft school improvement and district goals is something that really got started when, uh, back when our middle school and the district was on a uh, list. I'm happy to, to state that we are now off the state education uh, list of schools in needs of improvement. Uh, we've achieved status so that we are no longer on uh, that list. So. But what we decided to do is to continue to uh, make gains and use the structure that we used uh, that had to be put into place in order for New York State reporting and things like that. We didn't just, uh, we were at the middle school level where we were identified, but the Greenville decided to go district-wide with the school improvement and things, uh, and really using the, the scaffolding uh, that was provided by New York State. And the district really opened, with open arms, jumped into looking to improve. So this calendar kind of uh, generated out of that. So it really helps to drive our processes and uh, school improvement in regards to when certain things are gonna take place. So we are uh, putting that forward to, um, to the Board of Education to start to take a look at um, you know, our district goals and the, the uh, work that'll go around developing our, our, our plan for the next year towards those goals, those district goals. Does anyone have any thoughts on the calendar or the overall timing? I will mention that one, that one thing that you'll notice is in the past we've had a uh, presentation at the end of June uh, with some data and we've decided this year that we're going to push that into July where we have the opportunity to have more final data um, to present to the Board of Education. Uh, in the past, we were kind of uh, tied by certain timelines within New York State. We are no longer tied by those. And this gives our administrative team and our, our teachers an opportunity to uh, wind down the school year 
and get that data and we'll have a more complete data uh, set available uh, end of June, early July to be able to put together and present to the board. So that just moved. That's the one area that's the biggest change from um, the, the calendar from last year to this year. In looking at it, I had one thought in that um, after February when we have kind of um, two data points, so that kind of takes us through assessments um, with iReady and everything else, then the different BLTs could take in March and April that information, compare it to the goals and the, the targets that have been set to kind of see while not necessarily being final we can look at trends that are established with two-thirds of the year. So that was really my only comment. Any other thoughts, comments? All right, then I'm going to move us on to the library book collection development guidelines, and I'll turn it over to you, Mike. So again, I want to start off by thanking everyone for their, uh, first of all, patience and also their input on um, some of the things that we've been talking about when we talk about uh, our guidelines and, and moving forward towards uh, letting folks know what our uh, library collection guidelines look like. So we've, uh, we've worked hard both internally with our admin team, our uh, faculty and staff, our paid professionals, We've gotten input from the Board of Education, from community members, from our district level team. Uh, we've used uh, our school attorneys, and we've used Questar 3, which is uh, oversees the library media systems for uh, 27 of their component school districts. So it really it was a collection of a lot of different uh, documents, a lot of different work, a lot of time taking a look at uh, you know, the, the collection guidelines and the way we're gonna put these things together. So what was shared with the public on Friday, um, I just want to, I'm not going to read through the entire document, but I want to just kind of point out to a couple of different things. Uh, you know, one of the things that we take uh, a lot of pride in, in taking a look at is, um, you know, our, our staff and what they're trained to do and uh, using some of their expertise and skills in and around uh, different things. So one of the things that, uh, when we took a look at the responsibility of the selection materials is you know, make sure that we are using our trained professionals and our library media specialists, uh, some of our curriculum folks in, in, in doing this procedure. We've done it for a number of years. Uh, it's, it's not a new procedure. A lot of these things that are listed in uh, this document are things that have we've done uh, year after year and uh, just putting it down into a, a format in which we can point to and, and show where we're at with things. Um, and again, we've taking a look at some of the uh, things that come into our collection. Uh, the professional library personnel might seek recommendations from our Quest R3 specialists, as, as I had mentioned, component district librarians, teachers, administrators, and uh, school community as appropriate. So these are some of the things that, you know, when we start to take a look at filling up the, the shelves in the library, some of the things that we want to go through and take a look at. The other piece that I just want to highlight real quickly is gifts and donations. Uh, there has been some suggestion that there are uh, an opportunity for community members to, to make donations to the school library. And we thought this would be a good opportunity and a good way to kind of go through this process to make sure that um, we have a process uh, in, in regards to that is somewhat similar to the book collection uh, itself is taking a look at um, you know those donations as they come in so in the back of the document itself there's a number of uh, appendices that will uh, kind of walk folks through either the, uh, the, the process of uh, questioning a book uh, making a book donation and, and things like that so it, this document really talks about that process um, you know if we're going to if a community member or parent is going to uh, or wants to uh, request a reconsideration for a book that is already on our shelves, this kind of walks through uh, this process, which will include uh, a, re a reconsideration committee. Uh, 
this will be appointed by myself uh, and, and may consist of both our school leaders, faculty, librarians, uh, district teachers, parents. Um, and again, I think one of the things that we want to make sure that we do is when we take a look at the formation of these committees, and this came through some of our conversations with our, our school attorneys, is the confidentiality piece is a big part of um, you know, some of the work that will be going on uh, potentially around uh, some of these conversations and discussions. So we want to make sure that we are uh, setting ourselves up in such a way that we are uh, able to keep the confidentiality of uh, the work that the uh, committee is going to be doing. Uh, we will, uh, part of this process is that the chairperson of the committee will be the one responsible for reporting out uh, the findings of the committee in which, again, that person will be known it will be an administrator in the, in the district. Uh, but this way it just kind of helps keep that confidentiality um, you know, of, of the group the way we feel it, it needs to be. And again, based on what we're hearing from our, our school attorneys uh, as far as best practices go. So again, I think it's important that we look to uh, you know, our, our partners with the PTSA, with our district level team, uh, to provide some additional uh, parent uh, participation in some of these uh, conversations and some of these works. So uh, that's part of where we're at with, with the reconsideration. Uh, like I said, I didn't want to go through this entire document, uh, but I want to kind of touch on some of the, uh, some of the main uh, pieces to it. Obviously, we've, we've used the ALA as part of our uh, kind of a guide um, to help us kind of form our decisions. And you know, we recognize that the ALA has uh, got different guidelines, not only for school libraries, but for community libraries. Um, and so what we continue to do is we fall back on the uh, professional staff who have got the, the schooling and the research and the, the necessary tools to help us make the decisions in and around uh, what books we're going to put into our library. So again, um, I want to thank everyone for their, uh, their patience, the Board of Education. I want to thank you for your time and energy that has been spent towards uh, the last couple of months taking a look at this. Uh, any questions from the board? I do have a kind of a question. I know this is, this is all new and we're figuring it out as we go, but with the reconsideration committee, what pool are we pulling? I know it's you're going to be choosing the people, but um, I'd like to see a cross section, not just the same people every time, the same viewpoints every time. Understandable, and I think one of the things that we've got to uh, put into to think about is that we may have different committees going at the same time, and we will take a cross selection of, of folks from our. Like I said, our teaching staff, library, library media specialists throughout the uh, throughout the district uh, to help populate those um, those committees. And again, I one of the things that I want to make sure that you know we do we're we're a public uh, entity, we're a public school. Um, you know, I want to make sure that we do have a cross section and represent representation uh, across the board for all different views and processes, but I want to make sure that we are um, you know, recognizing that we are taking a look at literature as it is being um, challenged, and we are looking at it based on uh, the concerns of whatever the uh, person challenging the book looks at. So we'll try to have a, a well, we will have a, a cross-section of ideas. Any other board questions at this time? Okay. Well, first, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for pulling this together and sharing it out. Um, one point of clarification: To what extent are we discussing this on May thirtieth at the forum? It's a great question. As mentioned in the the letter, this is this is something that is done. This process is done. What we're going to discuss on the thirtieth will be more about. Uh, parental involvement in access for their children for books and then to have some conversation in and around 
uh, availability within the libraries of books. So that is where we want to get some input from uh, our community on as we start to take a look at those uh, processes. Okay. Um, also, I think this is probably a question more for Jeff, the school district's attorney. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd appreciate just having clarification on, you know, the, the board and administration have distinct roles. And I think it would be helpful to clarify, you know, the board usually acts through policy. So here moving forward, um, whether it's, you know, the, who, who has what responsibility with respect to policy, process, procedure, et cetera. So I think if we could get his um, clarity from him on that or help moving forward to kind of frame the board's discussion in terms of what additional feedback or decisions we might be making. Yes, early on in this process, we, uh, we had some conversation about the Board of Education not wanting to make this a policy, which was then going to become a process that the school and the administration will work out and, and, and seek out. So that's kind of, that's where we went with. Um, in my last conversation with, with um, Tracy when we talked about this, it was really moving past, it's not a policy in, in which we are looking for board approval. It is a process in which we are putting together and sharing with the Board of Education at this point. One question, one simple question, Mike. Um, when you involve Questar, um, with I'm looking for some advice from them, um, I'm only wondering how, how identical or dissimilar this document is from what other schools are working with. Do they give you anything or any hint toward that? It's a good question. Questar 3, as I mentioned, works with uh, the other component school districts in uh, Rensselaer, Columbia, and Greene counties, and it is similar to what other school districts are doing uh, in regards to putting together uh, guidelines. They did feel that this one uh, covered more areas than some of the uh, ones that they've seen. Uh, but we also wanted to make sure that we were including our school attorneys who are also working with school districts in other counties, in other uh, regions of the area, the CAP region BOCES, so working it with uh, school districts that are in Albany, Schenectady, uh, Saratoga counties up in that, that area. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we had not just our Quest, our three folks taking a look at it, but our school attorneys who, again, were working with school districts from across the, uh, a wider range than what maybe just Quest Star was. Mike, how do you see um, if a certain title is challenged um, updating the board? How do you envision that procedure happening? So what will happen is we'll, uh, as the guidelines spell out, we will go through our process of setting up our, our committees, understanding that we have lots of uh, copies of books for our committee uh, to be able to read, go through that process. And then what we will be doing is having our chairperson share out to the Board of Education its findings um, from that response. So Mike, <clears throat> that report to the Board would come with the decision, so at the back end of the process, not at the front. Correct. Sure, just clarifying that the, the board would be informed of the challenge when the committee makes a decision, um, not when the book is challenged. Correct. And that is because it's a procedure, not a policy. That's my understanding from yes. it. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. Yep. I have uh, one small thing is uh, based on the the process that it's not just on if, if uh, something negative or a report comes in of a problem with a book. Will this um, 
group of people that you have, will they periodically look through some of the books and maybe without it being triggered from a like a request outside request or something, just keep looking at, at our books uh, on a continual basis, just on the you know, the select one, review it, and make sure it should continue to stay there. It's a good question. Uh, we have continued to uh, take a look and, and use um, as books come in uh, again a plethora of, of different avenues whether it's uh, state book titles national book titles bestsellers uh, different uh, groups that um, take a look at books we're talking about also using an advisory committee to help um, you know discuss different books that that are going to be uh, put into the, the school library. Good. And so just to clarify, these are books in the library. These are not books on the curriculum, correct? Correct. So I'm curious, um, and this is a quick question, um, where it's like the formal request for consideration, I think it's like point 0.14 there, um, where it says the items for um, Reconsideration of the items for substantially similar concerns will not be entertained for a period of five years after the decision has been made. So I'm curious if, um, like, say there's a concern that's reoccurring, but maybe it, like it's over months at a time. Like, what would that look like? And I guess what's the significance of the five-year period? So one of the things that we want to do is is we address concerns that come in that we address them uh, through a process through this committee. And what we don't want to be seeing happen, and if it's the same concern continually being year after year inundated with the same uh, process or the same complaint, if we've addressed it and the committee's addressed it already. Um, so that's the reason for, for that piece. That makes sense, thank you. Yep. Any other discussion points? Mike, can you talk a little bit about the 30th, or at least the, the timing of when the agenda will be shared um, and the details as we know to date, please. Yeah, so Tracy and Angela and myself met uh, at the end of last week to begin to uh, iron out the, the 30th in which we we're looking to uh, have a moderator come in and be a part of that, um, that conversation. And what we're really looking to do is, like I said earlier, is really to focus in on two areas in which um, we would like to get some community input, and that is uh, conversation and ideas around uh, parents' access to uh, their children's books and some of the things that uh, you know we can do, and some of the things we some of our community would like us to do. So to get some ideas around that, and then secondly is as you sit in this room today and take a look at the space and understanding uh, a little bit more about it is you know how can we utilize the space in which. Uh, we're currently set up and uh, we're open to some ideas around uh, you know having some conversation around doing things maybe a little bit differently but the idea is to do it kind of like we've done with some of our professional uh, data teams and some of the summer work that we've done is really to get people to come in and talk with each other and then share out uh, something similar to uh, our BLTs and DLTs do over the summer in which we have some we have a couple of main ideas and then have some talking points and then have groups uh, working and, and sharing different ideas where we can have somebody who's going to report out from that group, uh, whether it's a group of eight or ten, uh, somebody's going to report out, somebody's going to kind of keep time for uh, the group, keep them uh, on task, and someone to take notes. And then the idea is to share out, kind of gather all that information, kind of take a look at what our community is uh, speaking to and then being able to take uh, all that information and then go ahead and make some uh, procedural and some process changes potentially. Did, uh, did that capture our, our conversation on Friday? Okay. And do you, when do you envision having an agenda that um, can go out to the public? Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping uh, either by the end of this week uh, or the beginning of next week to have the agenda to go out. Um, we're looking for two hours on the 30th from 6.30 to 8.30 uh, to get some, some valuable feedback from our community. I 
just want to say, please come. If you've been complaining, if you just want to know what's going on, please show up, and we're trying to work with everyone. Anything else? Okay, then I'm going to move us on to policy 8160, dogs on school property. I take it away. Yeah, so at our last board meeting, if you remember, we had the conversation to begin to take a look at uh, this policy and the possible removal of this policy. Since our last meeting, there has been some concerns that have been brought up, and I would like to uh, table this policy before we enact and uh, revisit and take away uh, this policy because there are some concerns uh, in and around uh, dog ownership, uh, some potential issues at events, sporting events, and things like that. So I need a little bit more time in order to uh, get this to a point where we take a vote on whether or not we rescind this policy. That was the, the work we were looking to do. I think regardless of what is decided, there needs to be monitoring, whichever way we end up. Absolutely, yep. Canine police. So if, I understand there are concerns around the policy. It seems we did discuss the rescinding the policy in the last policy committee meeting, if I remember correctly. Yep. I think it would make sense to discuss the concerns and the path forward if there is one at another policy committee meeting. Agreed. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Jay, can you share when the next policy committee is? Audit well, met, well, met, met today, audit <laughs> met this or, or before this meeting. So. Right. So I was going to say, we typically meet before the board meeting, so I assume the next opportunity would be June. Okay. All right, then I'm going to turn it over to Hunter Smigel. And, uh, no, no, sorry. Um, so, Second reading of policy 6320, pre-referral intervention strategies in response to intervention. And again, no major changes or updates since the last time we've walked through the, uh, that policy. So now I will turn it over to Hunter. Sure. Um, no no uh, reports to read out that are three pages long this time. Um, um, I know, right? Um, but since then, I have not sent out um, any further um, surveys or anything like that to the, the student body or, or gone out and searched for any more responses in that capacity. Um, and really just what I read out last time um, is, is just, it's very general, like I said before, but definitely uh, maybe something to look into in the future, maybe next year, and really hone in on some of those things because they are significant um, wants and needs of students and, and concerns. So definitely something to, to keep on, on the radar. Uh, in terms of like other school things, there's a lot of, like student related, there's a lot of fun activities coming up, right? Prom's right around the corner. Um, senior class is our senior trip pretty soon. Um, we're going to Mystic, Connecticut, so I'm pretty excited for that. Um, but yeah, just a lot of exciting things. And of course, you know, we heard earlier the, the science fair being a great success. And I know, I know my brother was kind of excited about that as he was up there tonight. So, you know, things like that. Uh, the school is doing some great things for the, the students keeping them engaged and involved in those kind of like team activities. I know just kind of speaking to a significant thing in my life, the state convention for FFA is going to be next week. Um, at the end of next week, the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I'll be out there all next week missing school but, <laughs> um, and preparing for that. But there's a lot of cool things that are going on in the school. But then again, just to reiterate the significance of that uh, survey and how it's something that we should uh, kind of look into for the future. That's all good. So two quick thoughts. Of course you will be making up any missed school work, right? Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no questions asked. And um, the other thought that comes to mind is you're graduating this year, so we will be transitioning to another student representative. Um, Mike, could you talk about, has the individual, and I'm putting her on the spot, um, been selected, or like what is the timing of that? Because ideally, 
it would be great if Hunter could have a transition time um, with that other student. I'm not sure how much of that transition time we'll be actually able to have because we won't appoint the, the person until probably the September board meeting. But the process will begin uh, soon because again, what we wanna make sure is we get out before the end of the school year, we have that person in place to be able to uh, fill these big shoes that Hunter has kind of carved the path in here. Uh, so we will, again, follow the same process that we did uh, with, with Hunter. We'll put it out to our current juniors, uh, looking for folks who would be interested in uh, serving in this capacity on a, as a student member of the school board, and then giving uh, his uh, or hers Peers an opportunity to vote to uh, elect this person to the seat, and then if we can get that wrapped up before uh, graduation day, we'll make sure we set up next in line. Join us. So I think one of the things, um, documentation that you can then use it for any type of transition would be very helpful. On I would assume a shared Google Drive related to the school account and so forth. And please provide an email where we can contact you once, because um, I think your email will be deactivated in July? August. August. Well, let's, okay. let's, let's slow, slow this down. <laughs> Hunter's got some time left with us here, and we wanted to take as much time as we can to let him enjoy uh, the number of things that he talked about. I know the prom is a big piece coming up, and uh, you know, they've got a big event, I believe, Friday, where they come in and SAD is sponsored, uh, you know, an opportunity to come in and, kind of walk through the, the perils and some of the potential dangers of uh, prom night and things like that. So it's a, it's a pretty powerful uh, opportunity to share and show with our students uh, some of the dangers that are out there that sometimes we don't want to talk about, but we have to make sure that they're uh, acutely aware of. So um, you know, we got that coming up on, on Friday as well. But you're not going anywhere yet, Hunter. <laughs> Plenty of time, plenty of time. Um, then I'm gonna move us on to action items. So I'm going to combine 6.1, the minutes of April 17th, 6.2, the April 25th minutes, and 6.3, which is the May 2nd. So if I could have a motion to approve those three minutes. Duncan and Jim. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I need a motion to approve the finance reports for the month ending April 30th, 2023. Eric and Duncan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to accept the Committee on Special Education recommendations. Angela, need a second. Eric, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry. I need a motion to approve the personnel agenda. Jim, Angela. Any discussion? Yeah, I don't know if Mary is here, but I'm wondering what the, these resignations are going to do to the bus driver force. It's it's Mary is working feverishly over there to make sure that we're providing opportunities and uh, buses for our students. It's not great, and we've had a number of resignations, um, uh, health reasons, and some different reasons people are, are, are leaving. So Mary is doing a great job. We have been able to hire some subs that have transitioned into uh, full-time positions, uh, but it is, it's a concern. Uh, there's, there's no question. Uh, we continue to look to recruit, put information out there. Uh, we're no different than other school districts when it comes time to, uh, you know, worry about finding drivers. But uh, Mary's doing an amazing job, and that, that crew we've got over there of drivers are a fantastic group. Um, but it's a it's a concern. No, okay. I didn't realize there's a typo on the third personnel. Uh, the third person is not a bus driver. She works in uh, in Ellis as our attendance person. So we've got the two on there. Two is bad enough. But thanks for asking, Duncan. It's, it's or Dave, it's, it's, it's trouble. Right. We look the same. 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, did the third person that you mentioned, did she resign or, or she did? She did, yep. It's too bad. Yes. Don't you love that job? <clears throat> We still have to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 I need a motion to approve the revised 2022-2023 uh, school district calendar. Eric and Angela. Any discussion? Mike, if you could just highlight um, the key day, the changes. Yeah, a couple of the, the main changes. Again, uh, May 16th is our day for our budget vote, so we wanted to make sure that UPK is uh, got a half day for K-5 students, um, and we wanted to make sure that our UPK was uh, equally represented there. June 21st, um, again, grades 6 through 8, uh, we'll be dismissing at 11.45 in UPK at noon, and then finally on June 26th, or 22nd, geez, nobody will be here on June 26th. Um, UPK uh, through fifth grade will not have students. I want to make sure that just was highlighted on the calendar. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the 23-24 school district calendar. Eric and Jim. Thank you. Any discussion? I think the item to notice that the graduation got moved on that one, correct? Yes. So originally it was on that uh, Wednesday because that is the last day of school. Uh, the, I forget if it's the 26th, is the Wednesday's last day for kids, and traditionally it's the last day, but there was some thoughts and concerns about um, families and things coming in and, and being able to come in for the weekend, so it was pushed to the 28th. All in favor? Aye. 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 I need a motion to approve the 23-24 Board of Education meeting calendar. No way. Does <laughs> <laughs> that Eric really feel, Jim? <laughs> Time flies. I got Eric and Angela. Any discussion? Jim? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to award the bid to Energo for electricity supply to the district at um, 0 0.0958 kilowatts for 18 months beginning June 1st, 2023. Eric and Jay, thank you. Any discussion? Question, Mike, is this for the school's entire electric needs? Yes. Has there been any thought given to splitting it up and doing nine months at a time? or something shorter. I mean, sometimes if, a lot of companies often will, you know, if they buy electric like this, they'll buy it in tranches because it lets them be locked in for a short amount of time if the price goes up or down, they can take advantage of those market changes. I'm gonna let Janet correct me if I'm wrong here, but we're part of a consortium, which helps to drive our, uh, our pricing. As you may recall, we were looking Normally we would do this in the winter time, and because the prices at that time were up around 12 cents, um, we made the decision not to jump on it as part of this consortium and wait. Um, I don't know if there is an answer to uh, chunking it in such a way that it's a shorter term, um, but that may be something for the future we can take a look at. Well, I guess it would be a question for the consortium. Yeah. If they've considered it, and if they will consider it. So, with our um, RFP, they only do it for, for 12 months, 18 months, 24, 36. And the 18 months was the cheapest. So and, is it, oh, sorry. and it fluctuated a lot. Back in January 19th, the prices for... It's your cell phone. Move your cell phone. <laughs> the prices for the 18 month was 0 0.1244 back in January 19th. So we kept holding it off and watching and watching until it started to fall. And then 
and we got quotes every week. And then all of a sudden it got nice and low and then it creaked and it creaked. And then I said to the rest of the schools, I says, I think we better pull the plug because right. air conditioning is going to start. And <laughs> so that's why. Yeah, I think the, the timing makes sense and it worked out well. Uh, it's just would ask, I guess, one more question. Um, you have those different times for the RFPs, but is it the school's decision or the school's decision to put out a bid for all of the selection needs, or is it you can only participate if you're going in 100%? You have to go in 100%. Okay. Can I guess the question? <laughs> in other words, if we, if we don't have the discretion, it should be a question for the consortium if they would consider it. And if, if the question would be passed along, I'd appreciate it. And Janet, how does this compare to what we're currently paying? We pay six cents. So we're only nine cents. Right, it is a significant increase that will affect the budget moving forward. But it is significantly less. I was gonna say back in January it was double. <laughs> Correct, so thank you for holding off. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to award the bid to Louise Brothers, seal coating and stripping for tar sealing and strip, I'm sorry? Striping. Striping, <laughs> not stripping, striping of asphalt in the amount of $76,745. All right, I need a second, Dave. Yep. Any discussion? Yep. I was just wondering if Janet could provide a brief summary of where the funds are coming from. If not, you can get back to me. I don't want to, I don't want to catch a cold. <laughs> um, you would probably see it in the budget transfers. Okay, because I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Well, I didn't. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the contract between the Greenville Central School District and the County of Green for the period of February 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2023 for preschool special education services. Angela and Jim, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the contract between the Greenville Central School District and the Anderson Center for Autism for the period of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Angela and Jay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the health and welfare service contract between the Greenville Central School District and the North Colony school district for 22-23 school year. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you everyone. I'm going to move us on to topics for future discussion, input discussion topics. Does anyone have anything they'd like to see covered at future meetings? <coughs> Where's your phone? On the floor. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if this is happening or not, but do we have pickleball lines on the tennis courts? We have pickleball camps. Could that happen? I hear laughing. Is that Denise? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we don't have pickleball lines. Um, and there's no real I believe you might want to talk to Rotary because I believe that they are raising funds for something in the town park. Oh, weird. We do have a 5K coming up if anyone is interested. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jay. Thanks. So what I would like to discuss at the next meeting is the board recently adopted a policy regarding curriculum review and would like to have an update from the administration as to if we should be starting that process shortly. So I'd like to understand 
uh, what the plan is, even if the plan is just the timeline, you know, what the next steps will be so we know what to expect when. And if, if we could have that discussion in June, I'd appreciate that. Yes, I believe some information had gone out in the board update in regards to the curriculum review, but we can certainly have a conversation at a meeting as well. Any other topics, Dave? Yep. Um, Mike, if you can get a chance to give the board an update, probably not tonight, but um, in the future meeting on, on the repairs, et cetera, et cetera, of the tennis courts um, and what the status is there. And then um, Mike and or Janet, I have heard that there's a deadline coming up September 30th on um, any COVID monies, and I'm bracketing a lot of um, different funds that are in there. If we have a balance on any of that, could you share that with the board? Where is it all gone? So it's only on the CRISA money. Okay. And the CRISA money is paying for this construction that's outside the library and paying for the courtyard. So everything, there is zero funds available because everything's been very good allocated to these things. And architects are promising that everything will be done by September 30th. And that is kind of a nice little segue into uh, the work that's being done currently um, with these classrooms, uh, the outdoor classroom, both here at the middle school, high school, uh, hoping to get that done. We got a little snag in the beginning uh, in regards to some uh, question about the, the design and some of the work that was being done, but we have gotten to a place now where we are full steam ahead for some concrete today. We're back on schedule in regards to um, getting constructed the elementary one over at Ellis will begin uh, after school because ends because there's a lot of work that has to go into that courtyard um, and the contractors have been really good about working around the schedule here at the middle school high school between state testing uh, we've got a June 1st Regents exam coming up AP testing IV testing uh, so they've been very uh, flexible in, in their work schedules so that they're able to get stuff done and still understand that we're on a timeline to make sure that by the end of September we have all this work completed. Any other topics for future meetings? Okay, then just some quick reminders. We have the annual budget vote and election on May 16th from 1 to 9 p.m. at Ellis Cafeteria. We hope to see everyone there. We have June 12th that is our next business meeting at 6 p.m. Um, we also have the workshop on the 30th at 6.30, and the thought being that it would be located here in the library. Okay, so closing open forum, please note the same guidelines apply as during the first open forum. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Do we have any emails? Just going to refresh quick. No, no email. Absolutely, just state your name, please, for the record. Melissa Bergen. We know Melissa. We'll wait till you get to the microphone. This is Harvey. Yeah. Melissa Gergen. <laughs> I'd like to thank the team of individuals who put together the library collection guidelines for purchasing, maintaining, and reconsideration procedures for the Greenville Library programs. It is reasonable and incorporates the expertise of the library media specialists, as well as including the input of the other various stakeholders. On a side note, I would like to clarify a claim that has been brought up at previous meetings. In speaking with Maureen Squire, the head of the Questar 3 library system, she is not aware of any books which have successfully been challenged and removed from any school in Greene County. Just wanted to clarify that point. The beauty of any library is that it essentially is a container of knowledge from which people can borrow as needed. What you don't want or need or might not be comfortable with can simply be left on the shelf for those who might want to utilize it or read it. 
Another amazing aspect of a library is that it exists to meet the needs of all of its patrons while providing information that will enrich and support curriculum, promote learning and literacy appreciation, in addition to providing information to enable students to make well-formed judgments about their daily lives. Librarians are tasked with also making sure that age-relevant information they provide is representative of many religions, ethnic, and cultural groups, and that those same materials include characters and settings which reflect the makeup of the student body on a whole. In essence, the materials purchased will not only inform, but will act as a mirror reflecting students' own experiences and values, while other materials will act as windows into other aspects of the world that they might not be familiar with. Some of these same materials might get lucky and may be selected to be mandated reads for assignments in the classroom, while others could be utilized for classroom relounds or story time. But quite frankly, not all materials in a library should be used for such things, as they are meant for an individual's independent choice read or perusal. They are not geared for every member of the school and therefore don't work for every classroom read aloud or even for reading aloud on a morning TV show. And that is okay. All library acquisitions should not be sanitized for such purposes, as the, the library will then truly not meet the needs of all of our students. A high school library should have everything from picture books to adult books on their nonfiction, fiction, and graphic shelves as they are all age relevant to the population within this building. Libraries and their staff are charged with maintaining a collection that meets all needs, inspiring curiosity, learning, and civil conversations about the world our students are growing up in, while also trying to preserve the confidentiality and privacy of all of our students. In a world where everything is in fact at our students' fingertips, we should be less focused on restricting access than on teaching our students how to find the information that meets their needs, whether that be by reading level or subject matter. You'll be happy to know that that exact skill is very much a part of the K-12 library program. Libraries do all they can to make sure access to information is hurdle free because what might not be a great fit for one student might be a perfect fit for many others. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? <clears throat> My name is Kelly Wolf and I am here to ask um, a couple questions maybe um, and as always very nervous so not comfortable doing this I don't know why I'm put in this position but I feel like I'm here for some reason um, you know um, I guess I can I just want to note that last year well I also want to note that I want to thank the board for providing um, the process. I do pray for each and every one of you every single day because I know this is a hard position for all of you and I pray that your hearts are softened and um, that we can come to a resolution. Um, you have mentioned that this has been the process for years, um, for a long time. This is how it's been. Well, for five months, we've been um, asking for that process. And just like in your open discussion that you guys have at these meetings, maybe you can kind of have that open discussion. I know it's not a dialogue situation, but these are very specific questions that you should know the answers to. It's not like, you know, anything out of the blue, especially when it's been the process for some time, as we now know, but last month we didn't know anything or any of the process. So you can, right, I'm not, there was no process given at the last meeting or the previous meetings before that since we started these concerns. Um, I don't think I'm alone on that. I think a lot of us are left questioning, um, you know, what your process is. 
So the other day, we just received this 11-page document, 11 pages, that um, went over a lot of things. But um, in real estate, I think they would say that verbiage is a little loose. We need to tighten that up. You know, there's a lot of may, um, we may include, you know, it's very loose terminology. Um, I've learned that within my real estate business that everything needs to be exact and precise. Um, so I do believe that your process that you've been using for years um, may have worked, but I think that with the new topics that are included that were just added to the library three years ago, um, including you know the LGBTQ community, um, that you know those weren't always added. Um, you know they were just added three years ago, so we never really had a concern. We really never had to have these huge discussions over books because there was never such material here that I am aware of. Um, so this is all new to us, although it has been here for three years. So. I think COVID, you know, blew the smoke over our eyes with these books and we got them into the school and that was great for everybody and everyone can feel included. Well, not everyone, but you know, the people that need to be included feel included. Um, maybe they don't have that support at home and I completely understand that. Um, with a religious background, I think maybe they do have that support at home and they have, you know, other outlets that they can go to to get that support outside of the school because it's not provided here. And that's that's what it is. Um, I'm straying from all of my very important questions. <laughs> um, so we had asked, you know, who selects the books in previous meetings? We don't know. And now we find out the librarian does select the books for, and it's been done for years, he just said. Um, you mentioned that donations can be made um, from the community members and the parents we can donate but it's still at the discretion of a um, you know official or teacher principal whoever seems it to deem appropriate so i'm not sure how i can go about giving you donations and being confident and trusting you that those books will be here on the shelves available to students um, there is a lack of trust within me personally. I can't speak for other parents, um, but that's definitely um, an emotion that is prevalent. And that is why I pray, because only God can help us with that. Um, I don't want to get too religious on y'all, um, but he has definitely, in Jesus' name, has helped me with this process. Um, so you said, um, the superintendent, the process is done. You said it just here now, you said the process is done. Those 11 pages told me that, you know, and with your loose terminology and verbiage, it was very clear that there may definitely not be any chance for any change because this process is done. So we're gonna involve the community in this great little event, and we are going to be there. We cannot wait. But the process is done, is what you said just moments ago. So, um, that sucks a lot, because <laughs> that doesn't include everybody. That's not really inclusion. And then you also mentioned a lot about confidentiality during these um, groups and what comes out of it and there's going to be one person to you know relay the information well how about to, to this is just a suggestion and maybe we can have this at a discussion um, what was the thing you said um, you know topics for the next meeting I also think that the parents should be able to have that input just like the board members do topics for the next meeting any topics for the next meeting guys so that we can be prepared for your questions and we can have dialogue at these meetings. Because um, Kelly Hubicki said that, you know, if you don't hear back, you just keep pushing, just keep pushing. It's like, oh man, well you're right here in front of my face. This is like an awesome opportunity to, you know, we have all these things going on in our lives and to keep pushing and pushing, you just hope that we fall off and we, we don't keep pushing. 
And I don't think we should have to push that hard, um, especially when you have these wonderful opportunities for the public to come in and voice their concern month after month after month. Um, it would be a great opportunity for you to include the community by having the parents or whoever joins and have topics for the next meeting. Um, and, and just to be sure and clear that that's not through email because email is very hard to reach and get responses consistent because we all have so much going on. Um, that's just the society I think we might be living in. Um, so it's a really nice opportunity to be here present face to face with you guys and be able to have this um, almost dialogue. Um, some questions that I had just now sitting, I really didn't know what to say during um, this meeting, but um, because the 11 pages were, you know, um, they did have a lot of information in them. Uh, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, one thing I, I noted was that I talked about these dogs more than um, these books after reoccurring meetings, which I thought was hilarious. Concerns from the last meeting about these dogs, but there was no you know, actual concerns from the parents at the last meetings, but there was concerns from the public at the, about the dogs, and you address that. So it's like you pick and choose what you want to have a concern about. Um, um, so transparency is huge. Do you think that maybe by being more transparent, we should include not just the um, parents in the school, and this is another next topic meeting thing, because I know you probably won't respond to it, so you could write this one down. Maybe including not just the school parents, but the taxpayers as well in these major topics, like maybe uh, taxpayers and the general public of Greenville would have liked to know and have an update on that. Um, I'm sure they can go to your website and all that and review it there, but I didn't see it necessarily you know, broadcasted like you were proud of the plan and this is what we have and we're standing by it. Um, I, I, I find a consistent theme that you guys are lacking a little bit of a backbone, but I do appreciate all the work um, that you have. It seems like there's a lot of confusion as to the process. And like I said, this is a new topic within the last three years, so um, you know, maybe you weren't quite aware of the process, but I'm glad everyone seems to be on the same page um, now. Um, and this is another thing that we should be discussing at the next meeting. Um, the COVID vaccines, I don't want to be left behind on this one. I don't want now, so now we're like, we're, we're just catching up. Um, you know, three years ago, I heard about these books on my news feeds and in my, my you know, news outlets, whatever you use. Um, and I was like, no, there's no way these books would enter my school. There's no way, there's no way, there's no way. They're so graphic, they're so not educational, they're so no, not I, age appropriate. I, five minutes, you okay. preceded it. Sure, no problem. So. so I just need the next meeting to you guys to address the COVID vaccines. Um, how is that, how are you going to handle that? Um, is it going to be mandatory? Or is the state going to get involved with that? Um, I would like clarity on that. I don't want to be left um, in the dark on that and then find out in September or in the school year that that's going to happen to students. Um, so if you could just address it, you know, um, discuss amongst yourselves and then address it um, so that the public can know what's going on with that. Um, uh, and the, also the confidentiality thing, I'm um, not too sure why that has to be so confidential, what everyone will be discussing at those meetings. Uh, I believe they should be live streamed just like all the other uh, board meetings and all the other things. Any public forum event should be live streamed so that the general public could also join. Um, that would be... That would be, I guess, about it. And. Um, there was an item on the, I'll email you this though, but it said on the um, budget, it was the Board of Education, and I believe it said an amount of $35,000. I just wanted a little clarification on that. And then there was also something that you guys just um, 
were talking about, it was intervention policy. If you could, um, and he was like, we already discussed this, so we don't need to discuss this. And you guys made eye contact and it was like, done deal. Okay, let's move on. I have no idea what that's about. What's intervention policy? If you could just inform us on that. Kelly, if you go into the website and you go into board docs, right? And you go into public view, all of the documents are there to be read. On this intervention policy you're talking about? Everything, everything, all of the attachments. One of the things that- Can you send have, me the link for that? If you, yes, I am sure that someone um, can send you the link if we have your email address. Okay, um, you're now past 10 minutes, so just out of respect, Thank I you. would like to clarify a couple of things. Sure. That while the document is the process, the, or the procedure, there are two key elements that our understanding from the public, as well as from parents, the access and the monitoring, have not been finalized, and those are the two areas that we are looking to discuss and have feedback on the 30th. So the entire document has been taking and, and putting it into a document, like what has been done, and so I guess, where am I going with this? It takes a little bit longer to, this is how it's done, and now we have an official document detailing that. So I think that addresses, or hopefully that addresses um, part of your um, question. The donations, We included that in there so that there is a, an opportunity and that there is a documented procedure on how to go about doing it. Um, I think that benefits the public and it benefits um, parents for that. Um, we're trying all of this and, and things will be adjusted. I, um, for that, so that's about all I can say. And and if you have specifics, I would encourage you to email, depending on what it is, whether it's a policy question um, or it's a procedure, then the appropriate party. Um, I have personally said I am willing to meet. So I think all board members have been open and trust is a two-way street. We have to get the communication. We are trying to establish communication in, in multiple ways. Um, so with that, thank you. And is there anyone else that would like to speak? <coughs> if you could just state your name for the record, please. Thank you. Okay, got it. Yeah. Sorry. My name is Marcy Bivens. Um, I just want clarification about what you just said. So um, the document that went out to the parents about the books, is that on the school website? Because I couldn't find it. I believe so. Um, if it's not, could it possibly be? So those of us that don't have children here, because I would like to read it. I don't want to hear secondhand information. Mm -hmm. I want to read it for myself so that I'm prepared to come to the 30th. And one of the things you can do, what I was mentioning earlier, if you go to Board Docs, on, which is on the website, if you okay. go to the section on the website that says Board of Education, okay. Board Docs is there, it's the third on the left. Okay. If you click that link, okay. on the left-hand side, it is public access. Okay. And so you would go to today's meeting uh -huh. on the agenda, and, and that all document. of the attachments are there. And that, that full 11 page document should be there. That is correct. Okay. It's, I'm looking at it right now. Sorry, I just didn't know where to look. Absolutely, and I appreciate that so that we could provide clarification. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Is it on? I don't know, but he had it done. He had your hand up. I was going to, at some point, that doc, that process will be ident will be on the website under. It's you don't you shouldn't have to go back to tonight's agenda to get to that document. Correct. Okay, it's there someplace already, I believe. Okay, if it isn't there, it will be. Right. But you can get it as okay. was just explained. You can get it under today's agenda. Um, my name is Elizabeth Burton, and um, I just have something to say. But before that, the documents they are a little tricky to find. So they're pretty buried, and if you don't know your way around the website, which it takes me a bit every time, so it is tricky. Um, but I don't know if that could be something that could be changed. Um, I wasn't going to talk tonight, and yes, I'm at the age where I have to wear a reader, so they're, they're on. Um, but I'm ju I just, I was going to sh uh, save this for the May 30th um, forum, but I just can't seem to ignore it too much longer, but it seems like um, there have been young adult books. Um, I read coming of age young adult books when I was a teenager, definitely got them out of the library. Mature subjects aren't new, um, and these mature books aren't new. Perhaps some of the LGBTQ books are um, finally in our circulation, and um, Kids that identify with that and within that LGBTQ community finally have books that pertain to them when they are, you know, figuring their pathway. So it is, I don't think it's disheartening that only the LGBTQ books are being targeted because there are plenty out there that are um, mature. And if you have a problem with these books, then you should have a problem with those books as well. I don't have a problem with either. But um, it just, every meeting, the only examples are these LGBTQ books, and that is very disheartening. Um, when the book debate started, a parent read an excerpt from this book, All Boys Aren't Blue. I admit, when I heard it was read aloud here, it was very uncomfortable to listen to. Um, and I think we all couldn't make eye contact during it. And again, you know, it was just uncomfortable. But um, understanding that context is everything, um, it prompted me to read the book. And what a difference this made. So I'm only saying this just as a means to encourage everyone not to look at some excerpt that is taken off of some website, but really read the book. Um, I was trying to form my own response, my own words, but I realized the author in this book said it best. So he acknowledged that these were heavy subjects, and he said, these things happened to me as a child, teenager, young adult. So as heavy as these subjects are, it is necessary that they are not only told, but also read by teens who may have to navigate many of these ex same experiences in their own lives. As a child, I always knew I was different. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I now know it was okay to be that different kid. That being different didn't mean something was wrong with me, but that something was wrong with my cultural environment. And sitting at these meetings, it seems like this continues to be an issue. Um, you know, even though uh, we are uncomfortable with some of these books, um, it, it's, it seems to be the LGBTQ ones that are targeted. And so I think we are just continuing to perpetuate a culture environment that brings hardship to those in the LGBTQ community. Um, the book was 304 pages and maybe two pages dealt with the encountered encounter that was shared at the one meeting. Um, leading up to this encounter that was uncomfortable to listen to was a courageous story of the trials and internal conflict that happens when an LGBTQ youth is trying to make sense of their sexuality. Um, again, the author qualifies sharing this very private experience. I really put myself in risky situations by not knowing what I was doing and by not having the tools and resources or supportive community to see that knowledge. I would not want my own kids to go through something so isolated that he did. So what a, what a gem to have this. Um, just, uh, will he said, will this part of my story be met with a pushback? Absolutely but I will be damned if I don't tell it because of fear. My greatest fear is that queer teens will be left to trial and error in their sexual experience, and it's worth me feeling a little embarrassed so that you are a bit more prepared. I'm thankful for these Board of Ed 
book discussions, my, um, and I, I would have never known about this book. And it was such a great memoir of a boy's beautiful journey to adulthood. I hope it makes me evolve in my thinking, as I'm sure it would if anyone actually took the time to read the whole book. We need to stop thinking, taking things out of context, read the book, gain knowledge and context. context. Um, if a book is challenged, I beg you to please take the time to read the book in question. Understand feeling uncomfortable doesn't mean it's wrong or pornographic. Um, and let's stop being the culture envir culture and cultural environment that makes these youth feel like they are doing something wrong. Hey, um, my name is Kelly Wolf, and I think everything that I have been saying has been taken out of context. Um, I want to have inclusion for all the students, and um, that. I'm talking about that community because they are being very included, and I think that's wonderful. And I never ever wanted to ban, I don't want to be titled as a book banner or anything along that lines, um, definitely not. It's all about inclusion, and there are not titles including all religions and beliefs, and I believe that's where my problem originally lies. Um, it has never been anything more than that. Um, Sadie Robertson has a great book out, Live, um, not in this, you know, I can go through all of these great books that are not included in this library because of their religious content. So um, taking my words and putting them out of context is very disheartening for me because that means you miss my point. And my point is to include all. I'm, I have friends that are in that community and I would never, never discriminate against anyone because of their own belief, because that's been happened to me uh, personally. So I would never want someone else to feel like that. Um, I just want everyone to be included. And that, that is all, and age appropriate, um, because this is a shared space. It's always been those two points for me, and that is all. I'm not trying to remove or ban books. They just need to be age appropriate and all religions and beliefs should be included since we have opened this door. Daphne, if you could clarify something um, regarding the website and the document. Yeah. That document was supposed to be on the website. Um, somehow it was not. So it is under new, the news link now. You'll be able to find that, um, that document under news on our website. Just press the gray button and a little blue light should light up. Okay, thank you. No, okay. try again. Not on? No. And it's more for the recording so I could pick up and actually hear it. Oh, that gray button. <laughs> okay. That one. okay, Robert, that's here. Do you have questions for the May meeting? What is the shelf capacity of this library? I will have to find out. I do not know off the top of my head. Do you know how many books are in this library? I will find out and get back to you. Do you know how many nonfiction books are in this library? Do you know how many fiction books are in this library? Do you know the procedure if a book is taken out and not returned? These are excellent questions, and we will get answers. Okay, I think there was one more I had. If a book is taken out and not returned, what happens to that book? Could you have those answers for the May 30th meeting? Yes, could you, would you be so kind as to, to email them or? Okay, we'll get them off the You're recording. Off. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Robert, what was your last name again? Chessier. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? If you could just come to the podium so that they can hear you on the recording, please. Okay. And just tell us your name. Can I have to press the button? Yes, please. The, gray one. the long gray one. Up on the top. This one? Yeah. Yes, that one. Okay. And you can, you can adjust the microphone. Because I'm short now. I've, I've gone down in my height. 
My name is Nancy LaRocca. I am 79 years old, but I have been part of the educational system most of my life. I wanted to be an elementary school teacher. I ended up working in preschool, but I have been at my heart always an educator. And I also had, we, my husband and I had two children who went through school here, graduated in 1987 and 1990, and we were part, uh, we would come to board meetings all the time. We were very proud that we got Latin reinstated here as a language uh, because we felt very strongly that that was a basis of good education and learning about words. Anyway, I have been coming with my husband. I was here at the last board meeting and Kelly presented and handed out um, some literature to all of the board members about a book. And I agree with, with Liz in the fact that if I don't quite get it and understand the way it was presented, I will get that book and I will read it. And the reason I want to comment tonight is that there was someone here at the end of the meeting who is uh, involved in health education who made the point that sometimes, unless you read the book and can put yourself in the shoes of the person who wrote that book, it is very difficult to know the direct impact of that book. I read the book. And, and the person who was here, and I can't remember her name, she said sometimes at the end of the book, it's not a negative thing that happened. It ended up being a very positive thing for that particular author. It was a young person who had gone through some difficulties in school and felt, was compelled to, to give his story. But at the end of it, he processed it and came out thinking that it was that he had come through it, and that it wasn't as negative as he thought it would be when he was experiencing some difficulties in school. So I, I, I want to be open, I want to understand, and I just think it's important for people to not just take a book by its cover, but really find out what's happened in that story, because I think that will have, make all the difference. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Have we had any new emails? No. Okay. Then I need a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss uh, litigation strategy. Uh, Jim and Duncan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone.